I'm just filming a YouTube video, don't mind me. <laughs> I'm not talking to myself, <laughs> but I am. Hey guys, welcome to Conscious Content TV for the second episode of Elephant in the Ohm. An Elephant in the Ohm is all about what's going on in the spiritual community that people may not want to look at, things that are going awry, or things that just need to be looked at and shed a little bit more light on, yet nobody really talks about it, yet it's staring you right in the face. Like an elephant in the room, this is Elephant in the Ohm. And today's term is about conscious uncoupling. I'm sure you've seen the term around Facebook here and there with certain friends' posts. When they go to break up, they post a photo of themselves with a life event or announcement saying, this is a conscious uncoupling. So, what is that really? Where does that come from and why do we really use it? When I first started seeing it on my Facebook page, I couldn't help but think, is this just a fancy way of saying, we broke up, I'm available call me. And then I wondered, are these couples actually really staying friends? You may have heard the term conscious uncoupling in the tabloids when celebrity Gwyneth Paltrow divorced her husband, the lead singer of Coldplay, though she never actually said that. It was actually her copywriter of her online blog magazine that wrote that in. So Gwyneth actually went on record saying that she never said it was a conscious uncoupling, never turned that coin. But who did? That was Katherine Woodward Thomas. She is a relationship coach, author, and creator of Calling in the One. You can learn more about Katherine Woodward Thomas from my interview with her up in the screen on the right corner. You can click that link to see that video. So the term conscious uncoupling actually comes from Katherine Woodward Thomas's book, Conscious Uncoupling, Five Steps to Living Happily Even After. If you guys want to learn more about that, you can go ahead and pick up that book. I have the link in the description box below so you can read all about it and get more in depth on this topic. But for now, I just kind of wanted to give you the insights of what's been going on in the spiritual community, how this term's used and what it really means for couples and what it means for you. So my main question, is this really just a pretty way of saying we broke up? How is it really conscious? How are you making the breakup conscious as opposed to just cutting somebody off and saying we're done? Or is it a great term to use when you actually have a mutual conscious breakup? What do you think? Please leave your comments in the description below. Have you used this term before or have your friends been using it? What did you think when you first saw it? It wasn't until recently that I realized it actually is more than just that and it's also both. It is a pretty term for saying we broke up, but it also is a great way to honor uh, what you had. It's the new way to end relationships because instead of just cutting off a connection really quick, not talking to somebody for months so you can heal or bandage yourself up with another relationship or one night stands here and there, it's actually a way of saying, no, we had a great connection, but we're just better apart. Maybe we're better as friends and let's try that. Now, it's definitely good to have your space apart so that you can re-evaluate your intentions and relationships and your emotions around the cutting of the cords and not being connected as boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other. So when you're holding this intention together, that when you part ways, you're definitely going to be friends and have that be a great support system, even better than the relationship that you were in, because maybe it caused some problems that you know wouldn't be happening if you let go of the labels, and let go of the attachments, and supported each other in the best way possible as friends. So if a couple is holding that intention, then I think you can call it a conscious uncoupling. Conscious uncoupling intentions is a great way to start eliminating or lessening all those sticky negative emotions like fear, rejection, doubt, worry, anxiousness for the future, who's my next partner gonna be, things like that where you can get your mind wrapped around being connected to somebody and in like a trance, in like a trap. So 
when you know that, hey, this isn't the end of the world and I'm still gonna see them here and again and we're still gonna be connected as friends and we're just gonna be transforming our relationship in a different way, then it's not so scary. Then it's not like, oh my God, the world's ending and we broke up. Though those feelings may arise, and I'm gonna be creating a whole nother video about how to deal with a breakup, that you can click the link right up here to see. It'll be there when it's available. And you can dive more into me with um, experiences of those icky feelings that come up during breakups, because trust me, I've had them. They've been hard to deal with, but I've gone through it, and I wanted to share my tips with you. If you see this on your wall on Facebook or somebody sent you this link and you've had a conscious uncoupling, please write in the description box below on YouTube so that we can see your comments on how this has worked out for you. Have you read Catherine's book? Or did you just see this on Facebook and say, hey, I want to have that too? How has it worked out for you? Please let me know in the description box below. just a fancy way of saying, we broke up, I'm available, call me. Actually, I am, so, <laughs> no, really, I'm available, call me.